So, good morning to everyone also from my side. Uh, my name is Wolfgang Fiel. I'm teaching here at this very institution. I'm very proud of that, by the way. And I had the good uh, fortune of uh, co-conceptualizing this event today together with uh, Gerd Sehner, who is going to be the first uh, speaker of the first block, theme block, uh, if you want, which is uh, titled Co-Realities, Clarification of Terms. I would like to quickly introduce Gerd Sehner to you before he takes the stage. Gerd Sehner has studied art history in Vienna and he has joined the Kiesler Foundation in 2008 as head archivist and is its current director since the last year. And I'm really looking forward to his, to his words now. Get the stage as soon as please. Life. 
and conceived of his future history of reception, Wirkungsgeschichte. He also liked to historicize himself and often located the starting point of his ideas in the early years of his career in Europe. To a certain extent, this is also true for Korealism. In his groundbreaking pamphlets for the 1920s, of the 1920s on the theater or the sitting space, which he showed as a model and display structure at the Exposition Internationale des Arts Décoratifs at the Industrial Modern in Paris in 1925. Some basic ideas were already laid out. I will only point at the themes like elasticity or tension, tension through suspension, or the principle of a continuously flowing space. As an illustration, I chose the English translation of his Vitalbau Raumstadt Funktionelle Architektur from 1925, which he published in his contemporary art applied to the store and its display as the so-called Manifesto of Tensionism in 1930. It would not be Kiesler if the development would have been straightforward, without any gaps, detours or losses. In our case, the Coralism, it is a book that he will often refer to in retrospect. In this annotated curriculum vitae from the mid-1930s, he is noting, quote, working on a book from architecture to life for Brewer Warren Putnam. Quote, end quote. Although he corrects this into, quote, commissioned to write the book, end quote. The publication should deal, quote, with all problems of new housing, end quote. When Kiesler was searching for a publisher for his magic architecture, <coughs> another publication, he will also refer to the, this book project as a starting point, so it's a little bit tricky. An important stage, which will be highlighted by Jochen Krause this afternoon, is Kiesler's involvement in the Structural Studies Associates. You can see the table of contents of the May issue of 1932 of Shelter Magazine with Fuller's editorial note in an excerpt from Kiesler's essay. In 1933, Kiesler was commissioned to design the showroom of the Modern Edge Furniture Company to create a showroom for modern furniture, Kiesel constructed the Space House, which was a one-to-one -one full scale model for the single family home within the showroom of the company. In addition, he published his thoughts on the single family home in several essays, such as the essay for the magazine Hound and Home. Of great interest are the preliminary stages of this essay with sketches for diagrams, charge, charts, sorry, such as the metabolism chart of the house, or a tabular morphology in which Kiesler links the evolution, the evolution of architecture to the development of the society and its systems. The archive of the Fred Kiesler Foundation is truly a treasure chest. Many projects still need to be explored. This is also true to the Corellism related material. Above all, the prelude to Kiesler's laboratory for design correlation at New York's Columbia University, which is still a blind spot. As an example, present a concept paper entitled Laboratory for Social Architecture and the program already clearly anticipates the laboratory for design correlation. I could endlessly present individual sheets and could still only show a small excerpt, a small point, so I would like to limit myself to just one more, a small sheet of paper. Kiesler was not only a master of spatial creation, but also of the art of language. Again, again and again, 
and already in Vienna, Anton Kuh, the sharp tongued critic, made fun of Kiesel's language games. For example, when the ordinary, when the ordinary space stage becomes the uh, space stage, Bühnenraum becomes Raumbühne. Colonialism is a neologism of Kiesel's, albeit, as we have often seen in the editorial of Shelter magazine, he was not the only and the first one who used the term. Uh, the small uh, note is documenting Kiesel's search for the right term, and I think he did well. Once found, the term soon got registered as a trademark by Kiesel. Quote, the term Coralism has been coined by me for the purpose of issuing under this signature pamphlets, books and articles from time to time dealing with the architectural topics and the interdependence of science, art and industry as well as topics pertaining to the socio-economic life and other subjects of general interest. My writing will appear in fiction form as well as non-fiction in later issues." End quote. So, fiction and non-fiction. <clears throat> the year 1937 certainly represents a milestone for Kiesel's theoretical development. On the one hand, he was able to establish the Laboratory for Design Correlation at Columbia University. Kiesel had already held summer courses at the university in the years before. With two particular laboratory projects, Kiesel and his studies, student story, developed themselves to, devoted themselves to the problem of book storage, leading to the mobile home library. And furthermore, <coughs> Kiesel dealt with human perception, especially human sight, which will result in the vision machine, which we will still hear uh, the, about the latest findings today. In the same year, a series of articles appeared in Architectural Record under the title Design Correlation. Kiesel discussed a wide variety of topics, from two architecture to Marcel Duchamp's large gas, a two-part history of photography, and reflections on the influence that new sound techniques and recording processes might have on theatre architecture. In 1939, Kiesel published an article on Coralism and Biotechnique, Definition and Test of New Approach to Building Design. The article summarizes the studies previously conducted at the Columbia University and presents the mobile home library, the most important laboratory project. In 1941, with a brief extension until 1942, the laboratory had to close, and Kiesel's extensive studies of perception, perceptual apparatuses, and above all, uh, <clears throat> um, the perception of art, served as the basis for the design of Peggy Guggenheim's Art of the Century Gallery, which opened in October 1942. The elimination of the boundaries between artwork, gallery space, and viewer, however, was accomplished not only through the omission of frames, but also with the help of the gallery's furnishings, the choralist instrument and rocker. They served as both socket for artworks as well as a rest form for the visitors. Kiesel explained his gallery design in another essay entitled Design Correlation. And the article no longer appears in Architectural Record, but in the Surrealist magazine VVV. In the mid 1940s, Kiesel worked on a book on Coralism and tried to find a publisher. Without success, but both in the US and later, after 1947, in Europe. Since it is in, written in German, most publishers shun the cost of translation. But there is another reason why the Manifesto of Chorism doesn't appear in the book. In the book. That is because Kiesler 
was working at the same time on another extremely comprehensive publication project, Magic Architecture, the story of human housing, a cultural anthropology of architecture following the question, when does building become architecture? Unfortunately, Magic Architecture remains unfinished and unpublished too. Over the years, the focus of Kiese's Corellist concept shifted. The Gesamtkunstwerk oriented unification of the arts moved into the center of his interest. This is again reflected in an exhibition design, the Hall of Superstition in the Exposition Internationale du Surrealisme at the Galerie in Paris in 1947. Kiesler traveled to Paris to install the exhibition and he must have befriended with André Bloch, the editor of the architecture magazine La Chéliture d'Aujourd'hui. With the help of Gabriel Buffet Picabia, parts of the German book manuscript of his Manifesto of Choralism are to be translated into French and printed in condensed form as a manifesto in a special issue on the plastic arts. Kiesler was to design an elaborate layout. Since neither Bloch nor Kiesler were satisfied with the translation, Kiesler revised it with the help of his artist friends Hans Arp, the composer Edgar Varese, but also with the help of the French diplomat, poet and activist Stéphane Hessel, who at the time was the office manager of the UN Vice Secretary General Henri Lochier. The manifesto finally was published in the special issue in 1949. <clears throat> At the same time, Kiesler collaborated with Philipp Rauf, the editor of Partisan Review, on the translation into English of important parts of the Correlism book manuscript. Entitled as Pseudo-Functionalism in Modern Architecture, they appear in the July issue of 1949. In the late 1940s, Kiesler begins to work as a painter and sculptor. From a st stage design for the opera The Poor Sailor, music by Darius Milo, libretto by Jean Cocteau, the sculpture is exhibited in the exhibition 15 Americans at the MoMA, New York in 1952. For the catalogue, Kiesler writes a text entitled No Dog Horrorism in which he discusses his artistic approach and his conception of his sculpture. The conclusion of this fast-paced course is Kiesler's second manifesto of Correlation, which is, <coughs> which is printed in Art International in 1965, the year of his death. And I will... Um, close my presentation with a long quote from this uh, essay. Quote, the plastic arts must now expand their horizons too and widen the arena of their activities to offer unforeseen capacities. It is evident that the constantly expanding universe of our environmental forces us more and more to give attention to time-space continuity. The traditional art object, be it a painting, a sculpture, a piece of architecture, is no longer seen as an isolated entity, but must be considered within the context of this expanding environment. The environment becomes equally as important as the object, if not more so because the object breathes into the surrounding and also enhances the realities of the environment no matter in what space, close or wide apart, open air or indoor. No object of nature or of art exists without environment. As a matter of fact, the object itself can expand to a degree where it becomes its own environment." End quote. So I hopefully open the discussion with this short overview and as I uh, mentioned, uh, I'm in the good position that uh, the Intel presentation and uh, the uh, definition of Korealism uh, 
could be uh, will follow with the presentations of the other speakers today.